Well, hi, Jack. Thanks for joining me tonight uh, for a yarn. It's been a while. It has, mate. Appreciate you getting me on. Mate, always appreciate your time. Uh, we spent a lot of time traveling over the years, um, definitely in Canada. That was a, a weird time, at, but we'll, we'll get to that later. We'll, we can't just come in hot and just start off that slow stories. But um, Jack's a PGA professional. He's uh, done a lot of work for the PGA media, I guess, and um, a lot of work with Challenge. You shaved your head last year. You're still rocking the beard. How's, yeah. the, hair? Is it, how's the hair? Is it growing back? What's, what's going Mate, on? Mate, it's, it's coming back. I've got a little, you know... Real oh, corporate look, the short back and sides, right, bit of salad on top. Beautiful. It's, um, it's been quite good to actually just run the fingers through it in the shower, mate. That's something that uh, I didn't know I'd miss so much. Well, it's, uh, it's winter in Canberra, so you definitely need a bit of hair on the top. You know, you don't want to be freezing without a beanie on. Jeez. Yeah, I am regretting, yeah, regretting the, uh, the lack of hair at this point in time. But no, it's, uh, yeah, look, it was, yeah, it was well worth it, that's for sure. Okay, so the last time I saw you was in Canberra for um, a few pro-ams. Um, hadn't seen you in a long time. You kind of just took the job there and you went off the tour and you just, you're just going more into a PGA um, coaching, bridging role. Not bridging, you've, you've, done, you've done that. You've done all your studies. That's all done. You've done your time. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was great to see you. And then obviously COVID happened. Um, you're in isolation in Canberra. Doesn't really sound like it from our previous discussion before this <laughs> little interview but um yeah how's it been for you what have you um what have you been up to yeah man it's um certainly an interesting time for me like I, i'd have to say i've been super lucky um you know playing the tour and and everything last year that was solely what i was doing and then gets to the end of the year you know you just narrowly miss your card in australia um you know you, the three chances you have to make a year's wage at the end of the year, I don't perform. And, uh, you know, there it goes. And I'm se severely in debt and, and sort of probably trying to look to see what's, what's next and all intention to play the tour stuff at the start of the year, but uh, decided to try something new in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and uh, popped a rib and cracked some ribs at the start of the year. So I missed the first four tour events and, knowing that it was going to be pretty quiet after that and I'd missed my tour card in Japan for this year, I was like, well, I, I don't want to chase the programs around and I don't think I can get ahead. So I sort of looked around and then just out of nowhere, an opportunity come up to take a position at Royal Canberra Golf Club. Um, my beautiful partner lived, lives here in Canberra and it was sort of just that uncanny opportunity and uh, sort of jumped at it before COVID happened, it was sort of, it was the decision was made and it was on the fact that the Australian tour is more of a hobby now rather than an actual, you know, employment opportunity. So, um, you know, took the position down here and, and yeah, played those few programs in the first week or so of starting and then COVID hits and we were literally playing the last event in Australia in Canberra before everything got shut down. And, um, you know, you mentioned ISO in Canberra, it, mate, it hasn't really been ISO for me at all. I've, I've worked full-time hours right through. Um, unlike Victoria, Canberra never closed golf courses um, where we were pretty tight with the ACT government on getting um, the best advice. And, and it was that we could stay open. We reduced back to twos. And, um, you know, I, I guess that I just must have performed in the, in the role and they kept giving me hours. And, uh, yeah, I've worked full-time hours right through. It's been absolutely manic at the golf course mate it's all people can do well you're a you're a likable guy you know you kind of get your foot in the door and you know the stars align for you by the sounds of it um i've got a couple of questions for you Bra Bra brazilian jiu-jitsu what what happened why why were you doing that you know obviously we're always trying to try different things um your golf's obviously taken a bit of a back point but you, you play great in canberra when i think you nearly won one or you won a prime the first the first one and i thought he's He's obviously got a normal job, bit of stability, mental health's all healthy, and bang, how he comes and wins. Come off event. no preparation, hadn't hit a golf ball in eight or nine weeks up until a week prior to those events. Hit a few balls after work, played oh. a few holes. Yeah, it was it, it was it, it really annoyed me to be honest because I oh. come out and play like that in those proams after grinding day in day out for months on end, leading into big events, and then and not perform and then you turn up off no prep and I guess the expectations are lower and all of a sudden you, you perform. So there's probably something to that, but jujitsu, oh, uh, doing what we do, like having being a, a professional sportsman relying on 
your sport and your performance to pay the bills, you are, I, I just stopped myself from doing anything fun. Like I've mm. never been to the snow. I, I'd always, you know, you'd never go mountain bike riding and all these fun adrenaline stuff that I enjoy. Um, and it got to the start of the year and that opportunity come up and I'm super interested in the art form that is jujitsu. Like it's, it, you know, once you get past the idea of rolling around with another bloke, getting all sweaty and up close and personal, yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Bit different these days. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> At least you um, got your clothes on, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. Sometimes. Um, oh, good. But, uh, but no, like I, I was always interested in it, and and my physio up there at the time was he was doing it, and he said, "Come along, we'll get some beginner classes." And I, my ego got in the way. There was a guy who'd been doing it for a long time. And I was always taught, like I was told pretty clearly, don't overreach, you know, like these guys know what they're doing. And he was, he was being a bit rough with me and I tried to overpower him and he had his, ri- uh, his knee in my ribs and I reached up and it just popped my floating rib and then fractured a rib at the back. And it was me, oh, wow. you know, I, I learned my lesson. It was my first time ever. And uh, I'm still not deterred. I want to go back and keep doing it because it, I had a lot of fun, but it yeah. was, um, yeah, it's, it was a bit silly and it cost me quite a lot, you know, for, for decent op- opportunities at the start of the year to make some money. So, yeah, we've only got such, um, such a small window of actually kind of getting it done in Australia. We've got, you know, four, five, six big $1 million events. Maybe. No, I don't, it, even, th- I don't, I don't it, even think it's that much. I'm, I'm, cut, I'm, I'm being nice on that, but yeah, you know, we only have so many opportunities to actually keep your card and kind of set yourself up for the year going forward. But yeah, it's, it's kind of, I've always wondered, um, for me, I've just always done fun stuff. I've kind of, and kind of, I think if you kind of go in half-hearted thinking, oh, I might get hurt. A lot of the time you do get hurt. It's cra- It's weird. Like I, every time I went home to Perth, I'd always play like a Monday night basketball game and I'd just sub in for a thing. And I would always thought, don't be too cautious because you'll. that's when you kind of try to grab the ball and you pop your finger out or, you know, the amount of times you see that happen, it's, it's crazy. But, you know, it's, this ice has given us the opportunity to actually do what you love doing. You know, like, are you going to go to the snow this this winter? I'm thinking about it. You know, if we can... 100%, man. Like, if Threadbow opens or whatever, like, it's just, like, sold out. Like, it's gone crazy. So, I'm definitely keen to do that. Yeah. Um, there's super, super cool um, downhill mountain bike tracks and stuff around here and, and great nature and stuff like yeah. that. So, I'm super keen to get out in that. But it is cold, too. So, I'm still struggling with the, uh, the oh, temperature yeah. change from coming from Queensland. Well, you, yeah. You months there. You went from Victoria up to Queensland, so you've kind of adjusted that way. Now you're right in the middle of pretty much the coldest place in Australia. So, yeah, mate, um, it's uncanny how cold it is here. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm still getting used to Victoria. It's it's out of control for me. I'm a Perth boy. Everyone is posting stuff on Instagram and in Perth saying, "Oh, it's 18, 20 degrees, winter's day," and I'm thinking that's not that's summer over here. Like, yeah, oh mate, seriously. Until it hits the peak of summer there, and it's 45, and you just can't even breathe. Yeah, and the Aussie opens on, and Serena Williams or Doc Djokovic is complaining about being outside or something. So that's like, yeah, and making twenty billion dollars a year. Oh well, lucky lucky for them. Um, so did did you watch the PGA Tour golf this week? Did you say I watched bits and pieces of it. Yeah, I, I, I struggle your, watching your... golf, man. I, oh, I, me, me too. Like, mate, I, I can put it on the background. I can watch some highlight reels, and that's you know that was my big thing. You mentioned the media and PGA stuff, and. Yep. and sat on the players' board for 18 months and was a big advocate in making golf more entertaining and accessible to the wide demographic because, well, mate, more, how many more your consumable. mates and my mates... You know. Yeah, how many of your mates and my mates that have never played golf before uh, wouldn't even think to turn the TV on? It's like the most boring thing ever. And yeah. if I can't turn it on and be enjoy, like, find it enjoyable, how can I expect them to? So I just think the game is amazing, right? Like, it's the best sport in the world. Yep. I think it has a lot of opportunity to be entertaining and uh and yeah so i struggle to watch it but i did watch some highlights d is like setting a standard i'm thinking i'm so gonna follow his diet i was i was going in there i was thinking well he obviously made it is making it more attractive now like he's put on serious amounts of weight yeah i Just, wrote a i wrote a like a thing for the weekly newsletter at the club about it he's put on 20 pounds in the three months like yeah. nine almost 10 kilos yeah, yeah nine 10 kilos yeah yeah 40 pounds since college that's a that's a big amount. Like he's, I, I it's don't good think to I could, see. I don't think I could ever do it. You know, being vegan, but like for a meat eater, that's still a lot of food. Se- like, Matt, seriously, seriously, amount of like, the amount he's working out was like twice a day. He's doing like one one rep maxes. 
his club head speed's like over 130 miles an hour. I've got my suspicions that they're probably following around with a, a, a cup to pee in soon. So, but who knows? Like, like he's ripping it. He's killing it. He'll probably win tomorrow. Who knows? Yeah. He's a weird dude, though, really. So, like, it's no real surprise that he's the one that, you know, the talking point, I think I wrote about, you know, that I think everyone expected the talking point of golf to be no crowds, you know, all the social distancing and COVID measures. I mean, that was, like, just nothing. That was just not even talked about. It was all about DeChambeau and the fact that he's wearing two bigger shirt sizes and smashing it. Well, two so. biggest... Two bigger shirt sizes and um, a player tested positive and there's other groups. And it's just kind of like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll just keep playing. Um, he has to withdraw. It's like crazy. Nick, what? Yeah, Nick Watney. Like, like, Nick, Nick mate, Watney got done. Yeah. You and I have been in those locker rooms and that. Like, I know PGA Tour is a bit... You've been in the PGA Tour locker room. Yep. So you know them better than I would. But I just think of like, you know, the similar tours that I've played on. And you're exposed to these people like... You cross some paths, it's like close, confined areas. I don't know how they're avoiding that. Like, he must yeah. have come in contact with 50 players that week, well, like already. Men's locker room is just, it's normally a single corridor and there's only, everyone eats in the same area. And I know they're, I don't, it doesn't look any different to when I was playing a few events. It just looks like they could have put a few more precautions in, like, like the flags. Like they could have had one um, volunteer pulling every flag out. Grace mentioned to me, she's like, well, that's, they should just have a spectator that just literally pulls it out. No one touches the flag. You minimize contact because they're definitely doing those measures in Australia. I don't know, you know, with like the foam in the hole, are you guys doing that? You got the yeah, little, yeah. little cup up. I think that it's a goal ball keeper. bounces out from like three, from three inches. I had a guy I member come in complaining today because he, Missed a three-inch putt because he hit it in and it bounced off the phone, bounced back to it. Well, there's uh, clearly there's, hitting a bit hard, champ. But whatever. There's rumours going around that if it if it hits and it bounces off, some some clubs are saying, "Well, just count it." You know, it was going to go in anyway. And I'm well, like, that's, that's not golf. Like, no, the trainer goes, "Oh, I would have given you that." I'm like, "No, you don't get to give that." Everyone's playing with the same foam in the same holes, bro. It's all the same. Yeah. Work it out. Well, I'm, 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 it, it took me two, three weeks to work out because I thought just a goalkeeper and I'm trying to run it in the side of the holes and all those different things. But I, I flew one in the hole um, 18 North at, at PK, flew yeah. it in, didn't hit the, didn't hit the flag because there's no sound and it just bounced out. Like it hit the front of the cup and just bounced out to 10 feet. And I thought, well, that's obviously, and then I missed it obviously. But um, yeah, that's, a, that's the closest I've been to it. I've had seen a couple go over the side it kind of rolls in and rolls over like yeah but then i mean that's just pace control like it's just it, it'll, it, it'll 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 blow over soon enough sure in the whole scheme of things everyone needs to be grateful they can actually do it because it, when you watch it out there man no one's social distancing on the golf course either like i'm calling the tee and it's every tea time i call is you know we have to abide by social distancing rules like it, we're no different than anyone else there's blokes out there like arms around each other and they're i'm like guys like come on we're gonna like we're lucky to be out here at all no other sports been playing and he uh just taking advantage of it so it's we've been we so lucky, lucky we've been so lucky in australia with like obviously not probably not victoria it's been like we're the ones getting all the cases more people coming in through here in new south wales but it's just don't get complacent like that's yeah, that's my whole thing we, like if you look at any other country in the world right now especially UK, US, like even Brazil, like they can't even leave the house. Like yeah. they're on full lockdown, like we were kind of before. Like they can't even really go out for food. It's just nuts. Mm. It's but, a crazy time to be alive, bro. Oh, it's a it's a crazy time. Uh, there's been so much COVID chat. It's kind of worn me down over the over the days. I'm just trying to fill time so I don't have to think about it. But uh, moving on. Um, so you're obviously involved with challenge. That's why you shaved your hair. You know, yeah. if you want to touch on a bit of that for the listeners, you know, obviously big supporter of that, you know, you've brought in, like I brought a shirt last year for the Aussie PGA, the, the big yellow duck, and we all get around it. Like that's just amazing, really. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I'm super lucky to have been able to be involved and, and, and be an ambassador for Luke the Duck and, and Challenge Cancer Foundation and sort of come about last, early last year. Um, Riz, you know, who yep, my best Caddy, mate, yep. Caddy, um, we created a bit of a profile there and we got, we, not through nothing else, but we just got an invite to a um, charity dinner at Vic Open, which was the challenge. And um, we went along and the auctions come up. We offered ourselves up to 
to play a like a round of golf with some you know we went with three people at Royal Melbourne and we sourced it all in the room and and put together this package and raised quite a bit of money for Challenge in the end for that and then that initiated the conversation with Brioni Lyle and I knew J- Jared like I grew up in in Echuca, Rich River, same Gold mm-hmm. like Golden Valley region as as Jared and, and knew his family quite well although Jared was a bit older I didn't didn't really get to know him until I was out on tour in Australia and um, Brioni approached me and you know it formulated into a into a partnership there and you know I was yeah just repping all the gear I could and, and, and I was lucky enough to to get in hang out with some of the kids in the hospital and then come October I sort of just had this thought you know that maybe if I'm ever going to shave my hair you know I'd want to do it for something special like challenge and yeah because um, um, a lot of a lot of people didn't, didn't realize that you've actually you had the unbelievable dreadlocks i remember you'd growing your hair in canada when we were there and then you grew like right. the worst mullet and man bun oh, at all the time it's just this like ratty thing we're traveling like west coast to east coast in canada for two three months and i'm just watching your hair grow from fort mcmurray all the way across to ottawa and i'm just thinking holy cow and then you're like yeah he looked in the mirror does he realize how bad he looks <laughs> he tells someone needs to buy it look seriously just, just look because I don't think you were, oh, it was a crazy time. But yeah, you grew your hair out and then you were like, I'm going to go dreadlocks and, and we, we're going to go full, we dive full into it. Next time I saw you, just I was thinking you're a homeless surfer. But I'm fully yeah. around it, definitely. Oh, man, thank you. And then look, the, yeah. you were one of the few because I copped a fair bit of stick for it. You know, golf being golf, it wasn't exactly the, oh. uh, the most accepted thing. But, you know, it was one, it was probably a state of rebellion where I put them in. It was. Uh, spent a lot of money in Canada and partied my ass off and come oh, back yeah, with nothing did. to really show for it. So, um, you know, I was sort of questioning whether this was what I wanted to do was golf was it. And, yeah. and I'd had a management company that told me under no circumstance, can you get dreadlocks for years previous to that? Didn't get me any deals or any benefits. So I went, Oh, fuck this. I'm getting dreadlocks. It's, so, it's- it's funny that the, just the, the profile of a professional golfer, it's just this like one image. I, I see it as like a, it looks like an FJ in your shirt and you kind of, it's just a straight, no beard, no, like you're not a real person. You're just like a off the robot line. Like you just seriously, it just feels like that at times. And it's, it's annoying. Like you can't, you can't express yourself. Well, you can, it's just people kind of like, if you rebel, like get dreadlocks or you be someone else. Like I, I was rolling, a trucker hat last year and I had the long hair and I was just like, I'm just going to do what I want and create, create a profile for yourself, you know, and you definitely did that. And it's just, it's good to see people actually step and be the person they want to be and not be yeah, and it, any it, backlash. It created so many opportunities for me like that. I, I, I looked into, you know, what that would do. It was, it was a, you know, it was a conscious decision to create a brand and, and hopefully maximize some market potential outside of the playing side of things. Maybe, you know, it, it gave me the opportunity to get into some events that I might not have got into because I had a profile and I could provide value for those promoters. It's yeah. simple as that. That's like a lot of guys just don't understand that. I haven't been educated, but that's a thing. Like, yeah, you know, social media presence and, and yeah. what you can deliver entertainment wise is important. So, you know, that, that was, it, it was really good. And that was part of the reason why I conscious decision to have Riz there and whatnot. And yeah, and yeah it all led into challenge and that, that uh, arrangement we Brioni took the idea and run with it um she called it the dreaded shave it became something pretty massive that on the on the friday of australian pga being yellow day in memory of jared um i'd shave it off if we were to reach a target that target was 20 grand and Mm -hmm. we went past that weeks prior to the event and i would have had to get rid of the beard if we hit 50 and we, we fell just short of 50. Um, so thankfully I'd keep the beard, but you know, to be able to raise nearly 50 K for an organization like challenge and, and specifically uh, creating real hair wigs for kids that lose their hair during chemo, such an expensive thing to, for families going through that to, to be able to try and um, get for, for these kids. And, and I had the choice of looking the way I wanted to look and, and they lose that choice. So to be able to give that back to them was, was something incredibly special um, and made, if nothing else, every, if, if for four years and everything I went through with the dreadlocks and stuff, and that's all I got out of it was the ability to do that, it would have been more than worth it. Like it was an incre- one of the, my, my most, you know, my proudest moment 
probably in my life to be able to do something so special. So yeah, it's uh it's a pretty cool thing and, and I've been lucky to be involved with them and, and, and will continue to be an ambassador for Luke the Duck and Challenge for as, as long as they will have me. Um, yeah, that's beautifully said. You know, that's just the feeling yeah. you can't put a price on that feeling. You know, you do it for the right reasons to just see a kid smile or you, you don't you literally just do it for the right reasons. That's you know, there's enough people out there chasing greedy and money and all that stuff, you know, put your align your values with what you want to do in life and a lot of good things will come out of that for sure. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with that bro. So that was good, man. It's um it's been great. And, and like beard now, you know, beard season, they're a charity organization that um are raising awareness for melanoma, which is a huge killer in Australia. Yep. So like, you know, that's the reason for the beard. You know, you, I want to put a reason behind this sort of thing, particularly when it's creating the stir it does. Like I'm working at Royal Canberra with a pretty decent beard that's you know as much as i try and manicure it it's it's getting some attention amongst the older you know traditional demographic but oh, yeah. it's you know when it's for a cause like that you, you can't you can't argue for the fact that it's it, it's for a bigger cause than anything else and and unfortunately like golf sort of you, you sort of need that a little bit to be able to navigate your way through i guess this climate in the golf you know the golfing industry so um, that that is a bit sad, but at the same time, you know, it, it's fine, man. I I doing it for what needs to be done. It's and it's Mate, looking the way I want to look you, too. So. You're, you're chipping away at the rock wall that needs to be broken down, so we can just create personalities for each other. You know, like if the talents here, golf wise, like in Australia, like we're is no we're, doubt we're as, as good as anywhere in the world. It's just no one really knows who we are. Or we like like oh, we know who Jack Wilson is. He has a he has dreadlocks and he just shaved his head and. We know who's caddy. He was the is. lunatic that was in the stands cheering Tiger Woods on Pr- at pretty the President's much. Cup. Oh, I did see that. I did, I did see so that. I got this photo, man. Tiger Woods with the biggest teethy grin, just like looking up. And I got thrown in, you know, thrown to the wolves, being the head of the cheer squad for the US at the President's Cup. And but that's a photo I'll I'll take to the pool room all the time. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Well, it's Unlike just, you, I haven't stood next to him shoulder to shoulder, you know, out there on it on tour. So well, I I had an opportunity because obviously I, I, my last name's Watt and his is Wood, so I was like two lockers down from him, and he was in the event. And I I went over, to had a look, and I was like, oh, and he was like, I just think, geez, that's pretty cool. I sat down, you know, the little chairs and stuff that's short, um, where you put your shoes on, you know, those old fancy clubhouse, uh, country club locker rooms, and I was thinking, yeah, Tiger, blah blah blah, you know, it'd be so cool. Like if he was sitting down next to me and I was just leaving for the day and I, I went into the bathroom and I need to go to the toilet and he's just standing up against the wall and he was there. And I thought, there's no way I just got stage fright, like full stage fright. <laughs> and I just left. I was like, mate, that's the only guy in the only guy in the world, like celebrity wise, that and a few all black players that I just I just like get a bit starstruck. You know, most people yeah. I'm pretty cool with, but like obviously Tiger, you're just like far out. He's just he doesn't seem like a real person has this aura around him. Like I, I remember playing, oh. with, I was an alternate for the Masters as an amateur the year it was in Melbourne when he was playing at Victoria when Praddy played with him and, and whatnot. Yep. And I was on the putting green like before the first round, like putting around. And I remember like consciously thinking I'm going to putt it up like close to him, I'm going to putt it up. And you get to like a five meter radius, like, oh, okay, that's close enough and I'm out of here. And then you just bail off. <laughs> oh, just to- he is a special human. Just to see him, that's that's like enough. It's like you, you can just see, like he, it's just and how big his back is and like how he hits it's it. Short at the same time. But he's like, not like six foot, but he look he, he is, but he's weirdly yeah. He's yeah. like, but yeah. Talking about um characters of the tour, like we obviously have the talent here. Just touching on uh, using a few different platforms to kind of create who um, the golfers are down here. It's obviously why I started this a bit, just trying to raise that we have great golfers down here and no one really knows who they are yet. That might create, you know, just a personality and a, a profile on who they are. You know, I think there's a lot of, you obviously touched on it a lot with the PGA, with the media and that you can really utilize that to your advantage. And there's such a big opportunity there to, I don't know, just whether it's sponsorships or just, they know who you are. That, that's enough. You know, we play enough right. pro ams events. It's kind of like we travel all around Australia. Everyone knows, everyone should know who Tim Hart is. Like yeah. everyone should know who the Brady next what is, yeah. Yeah, well, the next person coming Brady through. Brady Watt is the world number one amateur, you know, past world number one amateur. So that's you, right. Everyone that's does right. know who Brady Watt is. As far as well, I know. well, as as kind of like a, um, 
I'm an introvert, but I'm, I'm kind of like coming out of my bubble now a bit more, but like, that's just kind of the person I am. Like I get to know you. I, you were well and truly out of your bubble when, I, when we traveled in Canada, I can assure you of that. Well, let's, let's go there. So <laughs> I, I saw you Fort McMurray. I think I shot one, one over in the first round and I went to the range and I think this is at the point where you were just grinding. This was like right at the end, you were just hitting a million balls. And I think, oh, I know that guy. That's, that's got to be Jack Wilson. And I hadn't seen you in years. And I'm thinking, what is he doing in Fort McMurray, Canada? It's like top northwest of... Middle Britain. of nowhere. The sun doesn't really go down because you're so far up. Middle of summer. And I was staying with uh, Corey Connors, PGA Tour guy now. But we, yeah. I remember having a, we kind of traveled that whole six weeks together. And I didn't stay with you the first week, but I, I know the next week I was like, where are you staying? What are we doing? And let's just lift off. We where, went where all we? That was Winnipeg. Nah, so Skatch, uh, Saskatoon. Because oh, then we God. played Fort McMurray, then Saskatoon. You stayed at the, uh, the, the tournament hotel. Oh, yeah, right in the might middle. Might have been of a town. casino. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, yeah, I remember I went out. Um, I might have saw you out. It was like Canada Day. It's like July 1st. And I saw you out and I think, geez, I know that person. And then just a crazy time. Like just oh, sure like, mu- enough. music festivals. And then we stayed together like Winnipeg the next week. And we in the, in that crack den house. Well, it was hilarious. Airbnbs. Well, Kyle, Kyle Wilshire, he obviously, he set us up with that Airbnb and it had a nice kitchen and that. The you'll blame me for that Airbnb too. I guarantee you. You'll, ta- you'll take it to the grave, I reckon. But it was right on the main street. It was like the middle of nowhere. And we kind of had to drive everywhere. But Winnipeg's such a small town. Like, um, what I think, a town. What yeah, a town. just the nightlife there. It's just like a seven-day kind of thing. I think I was in the same mental space as you. We just like were like, well, we'd love golf. I think this was 2015, 2015. 2015. Yeah, and I just had my first year as a pro. And I was kind of, oh, kind of rising on a bubble. I had a few sponsorships and stuff. And I wasn't really... I played Latino the first half of the year and I just went up to Canada as like, well, I'm going to let my hair down and just have a, have a good time. And, and then, corrupt the other Aussie out there. Well, I think the worst thing that happened for me was I bumped into you and it, we seriously just had such a good time the whole way across. Um, uh, like I think weeks, we, we had a week off in Kingston. We met a, like, couple, like a family street down there and we just, yeah, you were there for Chili Fest. We're playing Beers B. That's where it was invented on that mate, lawn. Oh, that that place has a special place in my heart. It's uh, yeah, I'll continue to keep going back there. It's uh, it's a wicked, wicked joint. So when are we going? When are we going back, mate? As soon as, as soon as we can fly without getting COVID, I'm uh, I'm down. I'll be there. I'll be there right there with you. No golf clubs though. We'll just we'll bring the the last time I went there, I had no golf clubs. How good? How good's a trip without golf clubs though? Like when you when you travelled your whole life playing all events, you know, you just if you've got the option, bring a snowboard. Bring something else. Oh, mate. I just, just, yeah, just don't even think of golf. It's, it's the best. It's dangerous, but it's the best. It's, there's so much free time. Normally, you're just oh, like, well, I gotta, I gotta book so a practice more, round. I've got to play this. Um, so much more room for activities. So much more room for activities. <laughs> so, um, uh, are you, so you don't have any, you don't have any status here. So you might get into Aussie Open if, Look, I think and stuff like that. Yeah, look, I think that I, you know, I'd like to think that I can still offer quite a bit um, yep. and and justify an invitation into an event. Um, I think I've proven numerous occasions I can still compete. That's not a problem. My, my ability and and level of golf and you know, I keep I'm still playing here as much as I am a just a club pro now. I mean, it's, your uh, mental mental space is so much better now. No, oh, life's, life's pretty settled. You got your partner. You got you settled in Canberra. You got your full time hours. You got your you got your weekends back. I've got mine back. It's amazing. Like, what oh, do you, yeah, mate. What you? No one plays golf on the weekend now. Like what, you play midweek and that's it. Mate, I I'll, I I'll, might play once a fortnight with the members, whatever. But it's like beers on the golf course. It's oh, it's the dream. Like if I'm going to play it, that's how I want to play it. Well, you get back to social. Just like how good's golf? Like like that. Oh. Just such, hey, such it's a good actually time. enjoyable. Like, yeah, <laughs> I actually go out there and enjoy it. Like, you know, you've got to sort of lower the expectation. You can't, you know, your body's not moving as good. You can't hit the shots, but you, you make it work. You're like, you're creative and it's, I love that. And then you get to have a couple of beers while you're doing it. Oh, that's a dream. dream. I've, I've been, um, I've been just been working out a ton, like literally four or five times a week in the house doing speed sticks. I haven't hit a ball in six seven weeks i'm just like and i'm just going out there and just ripping it it's unbelievable but like with the pool noodle and the 
and the fly again I rattled. I was literally having 40 putts. I was just like, oh, you know, it's gone. I'm just going to pick it up. Like, I can't do this. It's too much. And then Nick, it's Kyle Wilshire on a, on a zoom call and give him a, give you a putting lesson. Like he, oh, he loves it. He was so it. known for in, uh, in Canada. Uh, every, every night, every night we, cause we, we traveled, I think it was six events we played. We stayed together for five. We had a couple of off weeks in Kingston. We had a night off Houston. in Houston. We had a week in Houston. Week, I was living in Houston. You stayed with me. We went for um, obviously trying to show you the local drinking holes and all that stuff in, in the woodlands. So yep. had a great time. I remember distinctly one, one night we went out. and I ended up taking you to Whataburger. And I was thinking, you've got to have this, blah, blah, blah. And then I look in the back seat to ask what you wanted to eat and you weren't there. And I just think, what's he done? Like, I, I felt like your chaperone that week. And then you were outside the car talking to someone because someone was yelling out of the car. I, I don't know what it was. It's some drive through. And then all of a sudden, these cops were there and you're about to get arrested. Oh, man, I, was, I don't know how they didn't pin me on the ground. Like, I thought it was, there was like tasers and all sorts of shit fucking about to come out. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> what just am an I Aussie. Doing? Just an Aussie. Fuck. I thought you said something else. Don't touch me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, with all that stuff going over at the moment, it's like crazy that that even happened. You look back on that yeah. and you go, wow, the stuff that's happening there now, that could have been completely different in like that situation for you, you know? Oh, totally. But it, mate, at the same time, lets us appreciate how lucky we are to live in this country. Like, Absolutely. my God, we're lucky. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, being, being Australian and, and just seeing that stuff around the world is just nuts. Yeah. Thank just God. nuts. Uh, well, it's been it's been great, Jack. I'd like to end Mate, this segment with we, the. We could talk forever. Like, let's be real. It's uh, we oh, we haven't God. even scratched the surface of what it is. But you know, I I, I appreciate what you're doing, bro. I think um, you know, you are. Although I've seen the other side, the the extrovert, the the animal that can be Brady Watt, you are generally the yeah. extrovert and to put yourself out there and do this, man. I think it's uh. It's it's a huge kudos, kudos to you and um, you know with good good reason and good intent and mate I can't wait to uh, watch the events later in the year and see you uh, tearing it up. Appreciate it, Jack. Yeah, it's um kind of that extrovert Brady's in the closet for the moment, just kind of pushing him in the side. We'll uh, get married first and then maybe he'll make a guest appearance before then at the Bucks party. But I probably have to get that over over her head first, but kind of with that stuff you kind of book it you gotta book it way in advance so there's no approval um but we'll we'll see you down here for the wedding eventually when all this covid stuff kind of blows over but yeah i'd like to end it with a question anything you want to ask i kind of brief you before nothing that's going to put us in prison or uh end with terrible consequences but yeah (laughs) what i got it what was running through your head after that last night in Thunder Bay, when we were driving, three of us driving back to Winnipeg from Thunder Bay, and you decide to overtake on a road that's signed with like two two ton like elk crossing the road all the time, and you go to overtake, and all of a sudden you're in the middle of two cars doing like 110 k's an hour, and you're in a two lane road the middle car and somehow you just just calmly just back it off ease it out of there with like absolute precision what is going through your head at that point other than the fact that we were incredibly hung over probably lucky we didn't die of alcohol poisoning the night before but how do you oh. how do you regroup and manage to well so, one just not I don't, kill us yeah one i don't uh, encouraged driving after a big night we left i think we left at midday it was still too late and i i remember thinking i'm in the best shape to drive right now i'll i'll drive and get us started you know i've lived in the u.s and like obviously canada i think it's on the left side of the road do they drive on the left side of the road yeah they're u.s same as u.s okay right right side um and i was i was driving and it was just it was just straight straight road for ages and there was two lakes on the side and i, I was overtaking this car that had a trailer so it was like pulling pulling something and i just kind of just going around and without because i i looked i remember looking in my i remember looking in my mirror and i didn't see i didn't see anyone behind me to my i didn't look in my blind spot which rule like that that's an error in my behalf like obviously that's failing your license test right there. yeah done so i didn't check my blind spot and i remember 
I got next to this car and then I looked and there was another one like, and, and I was like stuck in between it. And then it was just this chaotic moment. I don't think you and Kyle weren't screaming. There was no, no screaming or anything. It was just like a weird, like, because that other car was trying to go in front of both of us. And I just remember thinking, don't slam the brakes on because if you clip something, you'll just full, full like tailspin. So I just kind of roll it or end up in the lake. It's just an instinctive kind of like just break slowly and just suck out of this somehow. Like, and it was weird. I, it just literally played out. Like I did it. The other car just missed the other car. I missed the back end of the other one. And we just pulled over nicely and I hopped out of the car and it was like a white as a ghost, but classic Brady. What just cool, calm and collected (laughs) in. I just got lucky. I think I got like high pressure situations. Oh, guardian angel kind of stuff. It was a very I'm much re- like the birdie you made down 18 in Australian Open last year. That par on the last hole, whatever it was, to make the cut on the number. No, I'm not missing it. You're missing the cut, but it looked like you made the cut. Same, rem- sort of same, same. I remember, yeah, the, going back to that, I remember uh, we had lunch together after. I ended up missing by one because the wind died or whatever it is, but I was in that left bunker on 18 at the Aussie and I had two, 215. Um, and I was thinking, oh, I've I got I to make birdie to make the cut. Uh, so I got a four iron out, went over the high lip, over the big hook around the grandstand, back left flag. Uh, it went one bounce just over the back and I had like a 10 footer and tapped it down thinking I just need to make four and make the cut and went home and missed it by one by like nothing. But oh, shot, shots like that. That's you the go, game, man. That's, 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 the, that's what we play. It's just, it's rough. I'll tell you right now, I don't, um, the headspace I'm in right now, I don't miss that pressure of, you've got to completely perform right now. I'm really enjoying just playing golf for fun. Just kind of, if you want to pick it up, you want to aim at a flag, there's no short side, there's no consequences. And golf is fun again. Like, I think a lot of people that have played golf at a high level for a long time will, will say that. Like, it, golf yeah. is a really fun sport when you can just kind of freewheel it. And if you can kind of find the balance between that and the addiction of getting in the hunt and that thrill of just with a, when it's all just on the line, that's made up. If you can balance that, oh, you've got it. I, reckon. Geez, I love that. That's the only reason I play is to get that just, to, just on the odd chance that there's the thought of maybe getting to that point where it's knife's edge stuff. It's all on the line. That's. Oh, and the best, the best thing I with love. golf, it's, um, it's so quiet. So you can feel all that. It's, it's brilliant. It's, it's like, we this play. You know that shit's not quiet when I'm playing. It's fucking... Uh, if you're in my head, there's anything but quiet going on. Oh, Jack. No, jeez. <laughs> we could talk for hours. Um, I'll, I'll definitely get you on again. This is kind of just a loosener episode to the the stories of Jack Wilson. We should get, we should get Kyle on and do a, like a three-way. Oh, God. Look, so the last time we saw Kyle... We FaceTimed him when we were playing Beersby in, when you were living in Melbourne. Mate, I'll speak to him like once every couple of weeks. What a legend. He's, he's the best. But yeah, like that was together. That was a wicked FaceTime, that. That was the, awesome. Yeah, the trio. It's just a, what, what a time. You kind Waiter. Of, oh, I hope he's going right. I hope he listens to this, actually. I think Dougie messaged me. He said, mate, love it. Jess messaged me saying, oh, you need to, you need to FaceTime Jack and get it on there. So I hope they watch this and just go... Jeez, these guys Big shout are... out to the Canadian families, man. They're, they're the best. Like, oh, the moment we can go still, up there, we will. Yeah, still the greatest time. Greatest time ever. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I think that's like a good place to leave it. I'll um, let you go now, Jack. Thanks for spending the time for the evening. Bloody awesome. Yeah. Love it, brother. Thank you. Cheers, bro. Keep it up.